Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles, and it's time to talk about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Disappointment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the reviews are not good. We did a video the other day talking about some of the early reactions, early reviews. The Rotten Tomatoes score was in the 40s at that point. It, at some point in time, right after critics were allowed to say their piece, it was like 32%. Now it's still in the low 50s. It is still the lowest rated Indiana Jones movie. And all of the major reviews I'm seeing from all the major outlets, including this one from the BBC, are terrible. Right, it doesn't matter which side of the aisle your outlet tends to lean. They are in agreement that it's not great. And even the positive ones are, are, aren't glowing. It's muted. Um, it's um, muted. So we're going to we're gonna take a look at a couple of these. I, you know, I don't know what to think, how this one's going to do. They're hoping for $900 million. Maybe. It's possible. It's Other possible. shitty movies have hit that high. You know, we're looking at you, Fast and the Furious. You know, <laughs> it's like these movies make a ton of money. People might go see it just to see young... CGI indie, you know, you for back, yeah. 20 minutes or whatever. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Again, I I don't know what this one's gonna do. We've heard some Maybe of the spoilers. Her audiences yet. Um, I don't I, think the audience I don't is think gonna it's like gonna it either. I, I'm, <laughs> I am predicting a green bucket in your future Indiana Jones, and I don't even have the Dial of Destiny to travel through time, but I'm, I'm gonna predict a which green Which is heartbreaking, because it's the last one, which, well, I mean, but no one asked for this movie, but. That was brought up a couple of times. You like, know, no one asked for Chris Skull either, so. Yeah, these are the uh, apocryphal Indiana Jones adventures. So, but at least the other one, it was George Lucas. Yeah, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg came up with a humdinger of a fourth one. And that was one that was in limbo for years. This one was in limbo since like 2016. Yeah. He was contractually obligated to do it. I think that's the only reason this movie exists. They had an article talking about his his pay cut. Uh, he only, only got paid $25 million for this movie compared to the $65 million they paid him for Crystal Skull. And uh, he only got like five million for the good Indian. But that Jones was back movies. in the '80s, so I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. inflation-wise, that's a lot more. But so he had to do this movie. He signed papers in 2016. So that's that's this this feels like a contractual obligation. Indiana Jones and the contractual obligation. I get the feeling, like even with like console and stuff too, that he's kind of relieved. Like, you know what I mean? Some other stuff, but he seems, I mean, he's sad. I'd be sad too. But I also get the vibe that he's kind of like, oh, thank God, that's over. You know? He was he was over Han Solo at Jedi. He wanted to die in Jedi, so. Right, I'm just saying. And then, like, even with Indiana Jones, like, after the last one, he's just like, nah. Nah, we're done. So let's talk about this a little bit more before we get into it any further. If you're new, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. You'll get a woohoo. Woohoo! Uh, that is more excitement than you're going to get probably from the audience. Uh, when you go see this movie. I'm so torn because I wanted to see it, but now I'm afraid if I see it, I'm going to be, you know, permanently jaded. Yeah. I so, don't want to be permanently jaded. Um, I, I am permanently jaded. Anytime they try to bring back something from our childhoods, I'm like, no, just don't. Just leave it there. Why can't we just leave good things alone and remember them as they were? Why do we have to exhume the bodies and mm -hmm. drag the corpse around? It's... Money, because this is what happens when a company like Disney buys a company like Lucasfilm. They, I'd say they would have left it alone, but they're the ones that... No, they have to make their money back. They have to make their money back. They paid $4 billion, and hey, Star Wars isn't really bringing it anymore. So. Why they're worth anything is because of the franchises they have. So Star Wars and, and, and Indiana Jones are the two they had that were worth anything. We ruined Star Wars. We destroyed Willow. Oh, I forgot about Willow. Yes, and, there's and, Willow. And now we're going to destroy Indiana Jones. But series. you have to like Willow or you're a bigot because lesbians. <laughs> you, have to, you have to. Doesn't matter if the rest of the show sucks. That, that's it. You should you should have that as a tagline. You know, it's like critics are saying, like Willow for the lesbians. Five out of five. That's right. <laughs> you're you know, a bigot if you don't. You're a bigot if you don't. So, yeah. So, they bring Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones back with the, the, the deep fake. Uh, technology and I saw a review from IGN that said that he looks dead like throughout the, it's like watching the Polar Express oh I have like to go to the Polar Express I mean that was years ago uh, well they said it's weird because they've seen better de-aging in the um, Marvel movies than they have in, in this they said they have to watch like 20 minutes of young Indiana Jones like blankly staring at the wall <laughs> it's like it's like he's there but he's he's not there he's not maybe that's just they're they're actually 
capturing Harrison Ford's reaction to this. Like, yeah, I'm just phoning this in because I got yeah, it. Yeah, I'm stuck with it. So. I'm stuck with it. You know, what else am I going to do? But it only... So remember, guys, everybody went on about how it got this standing ovation at cons, which is normal. Like a movie at cons, you're supposed to give an ovation unless it's complete dog shit. But it only got a five minute. Oh, my God. I think, I think to me that's stupid. Like when I heard like what the bell, the animation bell got like this huge, like I forget how long it was, standing ovation. I was like... But that, why? I mean, I mean, I get, it's good, but I'm just like, I wouldn't want to have to be there. Like, now I got to see a movie, not to sit here and clap and stand here and clap for like half an hour. I'm like, no, I'd rather just not, not go, <laughs> you know? So they said cons, and there I, I've heard that there were uh, issues issues with Phoebe Waller-Bridge, a.k.a. Fleabag, because I couldn't remember her name in the last video. I was like, what's her name? Um yeah, every time she would zing off a one-liner. Well, I'm sure put, she wrote. Yep, and put Harrison Ford in his place. I guess the crowd would groan. People would make derogatory comments in French. And uh, les flibags, uh say something in French. <laughs> les say, yeah, whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it didn't go very well. Um, viewers could feel the, the straining of the film's quartet of screenwriters. Four of them. Four of them. Four of them. Wait, there's four screenwriters, and she wasn't one of them. I thought no, she was. I thought she. Was. I thought, okay, she so added, I, I thought it was her that was what was making. The I'm one sure she probably did. Oh no, she said it praised Waller Bridge's contribution, calling her the film's most reliable source of fun and repartee. Uh, she comes close to stealing the show from Ford. Now I, I went out and I, I found some spoilers, and uh, I don't know if they're accurate or not. And if you don't want to be spoiled, shut the video off. But apparently, wait, give them people time. Did you shut the video off? You probably shut the video off like five minutes ago. Apparently, yeah, she saves the day. She saves Indiana Jones from his toxic masculinity. And you think know. of thing. I'm not going to give you all the details, but think of like the Finn Rose Tico moment, something like that. Except, you know, I, I, I mean, to be fair, she kind of does have a point, but you know. Yeah. So my understanding is, yeah, she she basically. But to be saves, fair, also, Indiana Jones never would have done what they say he he would never he would know not to do that. Well, we didn't spoil it. No, we didn't spoil it. So now people left for no reason, but. <laughs> We he just would, wanted you gone. He would know not to do that. Yeah. So the ending, I mean, the good news is, again, spoiler, not spoiler. He doesn't die at the end. That's what we heard. He was going to die and she was going to take his place. But it's almost as bad. She she winds up saving the day. She winds up saving history from Indiana Jones. Like, what the, if that's true. But I think it is because this has been leaked. But yeah, it's not good. Nobody is, is praising this movie. Now, the Rotten Tomatoes score is 52%, but I have yet to see any... Uh, mainstream media outlet give it a glowing review. Uh, Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones deserves better than Dial of Destiny from the Daily Beast. Skip this. And this would be an outlet that'd be all about Phoebe Waller-Bridge. That's written by a woman. Yeah. Uh, you know, they'd be all about her being like, hey, you know, uh, put that that old relic in his place. And they're even like, yeah, this is garbage. Um, the one that really stood out for me, though, was BBC. Again, this is another... Another left-wing publication. They they hate you know toxic fandoms and all that. Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny review gloomy and depressing final act. Do yeah. you want gloomy and depressing in association with Indiana Jones? Do you want that headline screaming at you when you think about going to see this movie? Like look at this. The jokes, the zest, and the exuberance just aren't there. So instead of a joyous send-off for our beloved hero, we get a depressing reminder of how much livelier his past adventures were. Uh, I know I read another uh, another review that said that... You two know, we, out of five. Two Ooh. out of five. Oh, my God. Um, I read another review where they said that we had three good... I think it was Forbes. We had three good movies, and that's it. Yeah, here. This is Forbes. Uh, Doll of Destiny is now the worst-reviewed Indiana Jones movie ever. Um, they said when Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out in 2008, it was so bad. I wish Spielberg had heeded the title of Indiana Jones 3. It's called The Last yes, Crusade for a Reason. I agree. And, um, God, was that long ago? Yeah. My oh. God, yeah, it was. Wow, I can't believe it's been that long. But yeah, they, oh, wow. Okay, I agree. Who is this? Who is this? Eric Kane. Okay, Eric Kane. As the years have gone by, my patience with all this stuff grows thinner. I realize that sometimes you have to make some judgment calls about the things you love. Uh, for instance, while I know that all the Star Wars films are canon, I only consider the original trilogy what? to be true Star Wars. Yes! And only the unmolested versions of those films. The Lucas edits are a travesty even more grave than the prequel and sequel trilogies. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like the special editions, and I wish we could see the originals again. But anyway. And this is what I talked about before. Like, what the hell am I looking at here? 
This is what I'm talking about, like your own personal canon for uh, honestly, none of the films after the first trilogy count except for Rogue One. And I want to point out, it's people like us, people like, you know, other YouTube channels out there that have made it safe for Forbes to be able to say that now and not get called an incel troll living in the back of a cave, a misogynist, sexist, racist, homophobic, whatever, tool bag for saying so. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, every, now the mainstream media is saying everything that uh, channels like ours have been saying for years, because now it's safe to say, I love this, sticking with Lucasfilm. This is good for Oh my God. Sticking with Lucasfilm. One of my favorite movies of all time is Willow. Disney Plus aired a Willow sequel series recently that was so unbelievably awful, I will need years to scrub every last bit of it from my brain. It is not in any way canon as far as I'm concerned. I can imagine much better stories for these characters than the nonsense we got. So... He gets a five minute ovation. Can we go for five minutes? Here's here's the thing, guys, and this is this is where I'm at with it too. Where I don't get angry anymore because I don't consider any of this shit to be canon. I think this is a, a Disney cash grab. They bought the IP. They bought the rights to do the movie. Doesn't mean we have to accept it as canon. No. Same with Star Wars. Like I don't even watch Disney Star Wars. So they don't even try. They don't even try. That's the thing. They're not even trying. You no, know, at this they're, point, it does, it's just like we, there's a meeting and they, they're, but there are way too many people in the writer's room and their diversity inclusion initiatives and everything else. How are we going to make this, you know, super, 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 you know, diverse, inclusive, et cetera, et cetera. And they sacrifice story, which you don't have to. You can do both. But they always sacrifice story and they always find some way to, like in this case, you kept telling about things she said, well, you know, just so you know what kind of terrible person you are. Yeah. Because you're a man from the 30s. And some of it, like the capitalism joke, didn't even make sense. It wouldn't have, she wouldn't have said something like that in 1969. Not even that. That's, it was, didn't make sense. That no. has to do with capitalism. It's so, st it's just dumb. And I guess, I guess her one-liners are, are way worse than that throughout God. the, like she just has to, she has to pull everybody out of the experience. Well, it's like, like Disney Star Wars, like. You can kind of get into it for a little bit, and then one of the characters will say something that just does not fit with Star Wars at all. Do you know what my kids want to watch? Hmm. Barbie and Oppenheimer. The same day. They want to go see them the same day. That's what my kids want to watch. I want to watch Haunted Mansion, and I'm still thinking they're going to ruin that one. And yep. it's very diverse and inclusive. Um, yeah, but it's got Danny DeVito. And the thing is, normally, Indiana Jones would be like, I'd be there. Like, don't you don't understand. Care. Like, when I was a kid, I grew up, my because my dad, I grew up like Star Wars, Star Trek. We were at Star Trek movies every time they came out. Indiana Jones, you know, A-Team, Knight Rider, Airwolf. Like, that's the kind of stuff I loved. I would have been there like, oh, my God. Like, when they, in the Last Crusade came out, I was in the theater, you know, uh, I was yeah. older, so I was, I was old enough to go at that point. And I was there. And it's just like... This one, I, I, I don't want to go, and, and I, because I, I know I'm going to be disappointed, and it's going to make me sad. Uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at too. Like I still to this day have not seen the Rise of Skywalker. I have no desire to see no, it. I've, I've it. watched clips. I've watched the somehow Palpatine returned, and I watched the you know I'm all the Jedi, all the memeable. I don't shit. watch any of it. I just heard it from you. And I'm just like God. This looks awful. This just looks really awful. And it's and, hard, especially if you grew up like going to every one and reading. Like I read all the books I get my hands on. You know, to, you have to t t teach yourself to walk away, like Marvel too. We had to, to stop going, and after you go, don't go to one. It makes it very easy to stop going. Yeah, it's called breaking the habit, and and that's just it. I mean, we're people that you know. We went to the you know back then it was midnight show. Go to the midnight showing of the mm -hmm. new Star Wars movie, the new whatever movie Marvel. Always. Movie. And and now it's just like the habit has been broken, and it does get easier. You know, uh, there are patches for that. That's called good entertainment. That's not coming from corporations like Disney uh, entertainment that's that's done with care. And uh, look, occasionally you get thrown a bone. I'd given up on Star Trek. And after a lot of people pestered me, I went and I watched Picard season three. I hated, hated the first season of Picard. I watched like two episodes. I'm like, I am not watching this crap. This is garbage. This is not, you know, this is not Picard. This is Blade Runner and it's bad Blade Runner and I don't want to watch it. And I went back and I watched Picard season three and it was, it was good. It was really, really good. I'm like, if you had done this right out of the gate, you would have had me, but they, they fool around and it takes them a while and they try to win the audiences back. And I don't, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think there's any hope for star Wars at this point. I mean, everything coming down the pipeline sounds like more bad fan fiction. 
So um, currently sitting at 52%. There's only 29 reviews. I'll make that clear and fair. We haven't got, you know, a lot of people haven't reviewed it yet. I'm sure Disney will, you know, send a lot of people to raise that <laughs> soon. Yeah. So this is the thing. This is a positive. It fizzes as much as it lulls. Um, this is uh, coming from Flex. We got some new ones here. A film that inherits the directing mantle from Steven Spielberg should know when to step up. It's about time executives realize that franchises can't be cleanly separated from the visions and talents of those who made them. No shit! I agree with oh that. Oh my God, the media's catching up. It just took you a while. Uh, IGN. To the club. Yeah, welcome to the club, right? You bunch of Nazis. <laughs> you guys are Nazis. You just don't want Indiana Jones to win because you're bigots. Uh, I saw the IGN review. I watched the video of it and it was it was brutal. It was brutal. Four out of ten, yeah, I think yeah. so. The camera rarely creates meaning on its own, except when there's a familiar brown fedora somewhere on screen, at which point it charges toward like like a happy pup reuniting with its owner, a shot that repeats on at least four separate occasions. Um their needs being met here, but they aren't storytelling based. Yeah, we so about that yeah, before. basically that's Rolling Stone. That's Rolling Stone. Time Magazine. Time Magazine, which was in the back pocket of Disney. There's so many chase sequences. The movie seems held together with slender bits of plot rather than the other way around. Worse yet, they're so heavily CGI'd that they come off as grimly dutiful rather than oh, thrilling God. or delightful. Um, this is why I heard the de aging and other CGI manipulation of Ford's body only serves to demonstrate that the Dow of Destiny just wants to turn back the clock instead of doing anything new. It's a, uh, yeah. So this is just like, it's a sad and safe ending. I think people were hoping they would off Indiana Jones, but I, 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 I don't, I don't know. I don't know guys. It's just not there. The jokes, the zest, the exuberance aren't there. Well, at least the rumor about her becoming the new Indiana Jones apparently isn't true. I mean, as far as the spoilers are saying, however, that we do know there was reshoots and people were really mad about the original cuts. So that could have been a, a one point. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past them, but I look Disney. What the hell are you doing? Kathleen Kennedy is three for three now. I don't understand it. How could you fail this hard? It's a job. She destroyed star Wars. She destroyed Willow. And now she's apparently destroyed Indiana Jones. That, Let's those, give her more work. <laughs> that's like literally all Lucasfilm has, right? Like those three things, those are the three big ones. And Willow was never even that big, but she, I mean, it, Willow was pretty much a blank slate. Like you could have done anything with Willow, and it, and, but you fucked that up too. Well, there are more books. I mean, there was source material. Yeah, so. I just, I don't know. I just, whatever. Um, so we're going to watch this. We're going to see what the audience reacts. We're watching the reviews. Yeah, right? I'm not watching this movie. I have no desire to go see it. I'm like, I want, I mean, part of me wants to see it, but then part of me is like, but I know what they're going to ruin everything. It makes my heart hurt. <laughs> That's all this stuff makes our hearts That's hurt. Point. That's basically it. It's, it's like, all... why am I so bitter and sad? Because it makes my heart hurt. Yeah. We just, we like stuff, but the stuff that we like now is new stuff. Mm -hmm. New stuff from people that aren't just trying to make a quick buck. So anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Yep. I think it's time to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye. Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay. So uh, you can tell my kick setting. Yeah, you can you can so you can Wait, tell really it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's, it's bringing the decibels. Down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.